freedom's not free. Uh, we want the sound of motorcycles to be considered the sound of freedom. So every time people hear that roar coming through town, they're not thinking about a bike show, they're thinking about freedom. Have you ever been to war? Seen brave men die? Did you ever have to kill just to stay alive? Do you fall to pieces with tears in your eyes when they raise old glory and the jets fly by? Hey, thank you very much for coming to Sparta. I can't think of a better reason for Sparta to kind of roll out the red carpet, so to speak, is for such a great cause as to honor the veterans that, that just make our freedom possible. So we're super excited. A big round of applause for them. And the reason why we're here, the reason why we have all this freedom, is because of veterans, okay? There's a lot going on right now. There's a lot going on across the country. We're not always taking care of our veterans the way we should. And I want to do privately what the federal government is failing to do publicly right now for our veterans. So we want to raise some money. If you guys get a chance, go over and buy some raffle tickets. 100% of that goes to West Michigan veterans. But I really wanted to thank everybody for coming out for this. Let's make this an annual event. This, we didn't know what to expect. So next year we're going to iron out a few wrinkles. Um, but these guys have worked their butts off putting these things together. It's not just tonight. We have four nights of these taking place, okay? We're spreading this around Kent County. So I wanted to, I'm gonna give the mic to Doug Pickle because he was, I don't know, I guess right from the beginning, five months ago, he's been right there in my corner busting his butt. So give it up for Doug, thank you. And Tom lied to me too, everybody. He lied to me. He said, we're going to bring it into Sparta and you get a mediocre reception. <laughs> Sparta rocks it! <laughs> and working with Tony Van Gessel and Patriot Guard, boy, I'll tell you what. He knows patriotism because he served our country. In 1933, General Douglas MacArthur took what was a merit of valor and working with some of the finest sculptors turned it into what we now know as the Purple Heart. It was commemorated by the United States Congress on George Washington's 200th birthday. Since its inception in 1933, going back to World War I, 1917, there have been 1.9 million Purple Hearts awarded. 80% of those posthumously. This is a medal that every veteran respects, every soldier respects, and no soldier wants. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the siblings of Daniel Bean. <laughs> Presenting the plaque is retired Colonel U.S. Army, Nick Straffron. But you gotta know that your freedom's not free And I don't care What you think about me But you gotta know That your freedom's not free Each of these plaques are handmade, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll never change that because there is no soldier exactly like the other one. We'd like to have Marina Shanavelt please come up. That your freedom's not free. <laughs> Tony Van Gessel present. And this little cutie is Zachary's son. So,
first thing I'm going to point out, ladies and gentlemen, is you will notice that there was zebra felt covering all these plaques. For the families of the soldiers who have taken their life, they've adopted the zebra as a symbol of strength. So these plaques are covered with a symbol of strength in honor of all those, whether in combat or by self. This event evolved from the fact that my dad spent the last year and a half of his life at the Grand Rapids Home for Veterans, and I also served on some boards with Kent County that looked into veteran spending. And our county at that time ranked last in the state per capita for veteran spending. So that kind of lit a fire under me. I thought we should do better than that. We need to do better than that. So um, I've always wanted to put on a car show, and originally this was just going to be a car show. Once we got the History Channel involved with this, it started to grow and all of a sudden it became a car and motorcycle show. And the bigger it got, the more we thought we can raise a lot of money for veterans. So it just kept evolving and evolving. I thought privately we could do a lot better, and we could take money privately and put it right in the hands of veterans without going through these uh, filters, without going through the federal government and so forth. So I want to take care of West Michigan veterans it, to the best of our ability. And if we can drop some money in their pockets, if we can give them some cash for some projects that they need, if they got a kid that needs braces, or they need a new roof on their house, something they're strapped and they need money for, we want to provide that. And secondly, we want to provide money for the Grand Rapids Home for Veterans. Um, they have a lot of capital improvement projects that um, have been stalled out due to lack of funding, and uh, that's a whole different argument. But, I, you know, we need to do better for our veterans, and so we wanted to help raise money for them at the Grand Rapids Home for Veterans. So we reached out to Tiffany Carr, the outreach director, and she came on board 1,000%. And she said, what can we do to help? So we, we formed a kind of a, an alliance, and we're hoping to raise $25,000 just for the Grand Rapids Home for Veterans. Oh, well, yeah, I'm making the Purple Heart Plex, but I mean, like, American Fallen Warriors Project, or Fallen Soldiers Project, they're doing portraits, and oh, my Lord, the, the impact that has. That group and the way, the way Tom hooked this whole thing up was just unbelievable so I think today is fantastic I think the veterans deserve every of the honors that they receive uh, it's really nice to have somebody thank especially all of us guys that came back from the Vietnam era thank you very much oh,